Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today I'm talking about interpreting graphs of functions. So there's a lot of different parts of a function and a graph of a function that we need to be able to understand. So we're going to, talk about, we're going to be talking about intercepts, increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, linear, nonlinear, all that good stuff. So let's take a look. Okay, so here it says we've got, well, we, rather, we've got two graphs. So we've got David's savings for a car, and I know the scan of this document's not so great. And we've got height of a golf ball. So here we have something we see linear, and then we've got a curve. And we're going to be learning about this curve later in the year. It's called a parabola. Okay, so if I had to ask you first in this first graph, is it linear or nonlinear? You would tell me that it's linear. And we know linear means it's a straight line. Okay, we see a constant rate of change. Whereas this graph, this curve here, and you can ignore that vertical line for right now, we would easily be able to say is nonlinear because it's not a straight line. So determining the two, linear, nonlinear, that should be pretty obvious. Intercepts. Now, an intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis or the y-axis. So if I asked you about this graph here in David's savings for a car, what is the x-intercept? Well, I notice that this graph never actually is touching the x-axis, so I would be able to say that there's none. There's no x-intercept. But a y-intercept, a y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So here I would see that this graph actually starts at a y-intercept of 1400. Looking at this one here, x-intercept, I can actually see in this parabola that the graph is crossing the x-axis in two places. It's crossing the x-axis at 0 and at 120. So actually two x-intercepts. Y-intercept. This graph is touching the y-axis at also just one point, like in the previous graph, one point, and it's touching the y-axis at also zero, because we can see zero, zero is a point. So zero is the x-intercept, zero is also the y-intercept, and again, this graph touches the x-axis again at 120. Is there line symmetry? Now, line symmetry means, can I draw a line down the middle of the graph and have it be like a reflection line? In this case, the answer is no, because if I was to draw a vertical line down the middle of this graph, it's not going to reflect over. But, and you can see I already drew a vertical line here. This parabola does have line symmetry because I drew this line smack down, down the middle. Now the line of symmetry, that vertical line has an equation. And the equation of any line of symmetry is always x equals whatever that x-intercept is. So when I draw this vertical line, it's crossing the x-axis at 60. And that's actually the equation of this line. It's x equals 60. I'm going to zoom my screen out just a little bit more so we can see more of our graph. OK, so now this next part, positive, negative, increasing, decreasing. Positive simply means what part of the graph is above the x-axis. Negative would be any part of the graph that's below the x-axis. So what I notice in this graph here, the entire graph of this line is above the x-axis. So all x values greater than 0 are in the positive range of this graph. None of the graph is in the um, negative section, which is below the x-axis, so I would say none. Same thing here. In this graph, the entire parabola okay, is above the x-axis, so it's in the positive range. So I'm going to say all x values that are greater than 0, part of the graph. And since none of it's negative, I'm going to say none. Now, increasing is about what part of the graph do you see as x increases, the y also increases. And for this first one, the entire graph is increasing. So for all coordinates on this function where x is greater than 0, it is increasing. There's no part of this graph that's decreasing. Now this one's going to be a little different. First, I see the graph starts to increase, and think about it, it's height of a golf ball. So the golf ball starts at the ground, and then it starts to go up, and then as soon as it hits its maximum point, it starts to go down, or decrease. So there's actually both here. So the area that this graph is increasing would be 0 is less than x, which is less than 60. It's a compound inequality. Now, so far in algebra, we haven't learned about compound inequalities, but what this simply means is it's all the x values that are less than 60, okay, is where the graph is actually increasing, 
and it's all the values where x is greater than zero. And if you notice, zero less than x is actually x is greater than zero, just flipped. So I would talk about the range from zero to 60, it's increasing. And then if I wanna talk about the decreasing, it decreases when x is at 60 and goes all the way to 120. So the range here from 60 to 120. So I would say it's decreasing from 60 is less than x, which is less than 120. Relative extrema is when you have a highest point, um, and it is really an important point. In this graph, the graph is just going to go on forever, and there's no specific highest point. So there's no NB, uh, no relative extrema. And N behavior is just simply for this one. As the weeks increase, the savings increase. So as the weeks go longer, the amount of money that gets saved, it's pretty standard. But this one here, the maximum point, this is the relative extrema. It's an important point. It's the point where as the golf ball went into the air, it went to its highest point, and then it started to decrease. So I would be able to look at that relative extrema point, and I would say at x equals 60, this point here, the coordinate is, it looks like 60, 150, okay? So after um, 60 feet from the T, it's 150 feet in the air. And that's that really important point. Um, and behavior for this graph would be that as the golf ball reaches 120 yards from the T, it hits the ground because notice the height then is at zero. Okay, we're gonna look at another two graphs. And a lot of this information can, again, feel very confusing at first, but we definitely need to look at more information for it. So we're gonna talk about the same key functions, same key properties. Um, this first one, is it linear or nonlinear? You would say it's linear. Is this graph linear or nonlinear? You would say it's definitely nonlinear. It's another parabola. X-intercept of this graph about right whale population, the graph is hitting the x-axis at 10. The graph is hitting the y-axis at what looks like about 240. In this graph here, I can see the graph is actually touching the x-axis at two points, negative 320 and positive 320. So there happens to be two x-intercepts again. The y-intercept, it's crossing the y-axis at this number 640. Is there line symmetry? No. Is there line symmetry here? Yes, because I can draw a line down the middle. And it happens to be that that line down the middle is already the y-axis. And the equation for the y-axis is just simply x equals 0. Positive. Well, let's see. This whole graph is above the x-axis, so the entire graph is positive. All x values greater than 0. Negative. Is any part of this graph below the x-axis? No. Looking at this one. The entire graph is above the x-axis. Now, I don't want to say x is greater than 0 because that only means this part. I want to include everything. So I want to include from negative 320 all the way to positive 320. The graph is positive. And again, there's no negative because it's not dipping below the x-axis. Increasing. This graph is definitely not increased. It's only decreasing. So all x values greater than 0 are where the graph is decreasing. Increasing. So again, this is where we're going to have those two separate statements. Increasing, it goes from negative 320, and it increases all the way when x is 0. So from three, negative 320 to 0 is when it increases. The other way you can say that is just simply when all values are at less than 0, but I'm going to fill in what I just mentioned as a compound inequality. So negative 320 is less than x which is less than zero. So both of those statements would be completely fine because you're talking about this range here from negative 320 to zero. And then decreasing is from zero to positive 320. So you could say all val x values that are greater than zero, everything greater than zero, or you can write that other statement. And let me just write it here, same idea. It's from zero to x to 320. So again, either one of those statements would be fine. There is no relative extrema here. There's no special endpoint. Um, you could say that after 10 generations, because that's when it goes to zero, the right well population is at zero. So after 10 generations, the population goes to zero. And in this one here, we do have a relative extrema. It's the highest point. So it's at zero. 0 640 is this top point. 
and end behavior is simply that the gateway arch has a maximum height of 640 feet and it's 640 feet wide. I know this is a lot of information. Please feel free to watch it over again if you need it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.